Hi, Patrick. Thank you for Hello. joining me uh, for this interview today. It's been an honor for me to have an interview session with you. Um, so the first thing first, uh, I just, maybe we can start with your former team, Borussia Dortmund, right? Since you're wearing the jersey. <laughs> um, <laughs> as for now, what do you think uh, of them this season under Marco Rose? Uh, first of all, I have to say it's um, it's I think it's a decent season. It's it's been not an easy start uh, since uh, during during the summer break. There's been a big tournament, so many players joined late. So the preseason was already a little bit of an uh, of a task for for many teams, um, especially teams with a lot of international players. Um, and of course, not everything worked out the way we wanted it to be. But if you if you look at some numbers, it's like we're still in second place at the moment uh, behind Bayern. It's just a point. Um, they're just a point ahead of us. It's um, we had thirty points from thirteen games now, which is which is really good. It's um, seventeen out of twenty uh, has have been won. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a that's a good thing. And um, yeah. So, so we we're not doing as bad as as it might seem. Obviously, we wouldn't uh, or we we would have liked to to continue playing in the Champions League um, in next year, but that's not the case anymore. But in the Bundesliga, there's everything uh, still up for grabs, still still open, and and same in the cup. And with our biggest rival Bayern Munich out of the cup, so why shouldn't we? Go ahead and, and shoot for a, for a repeat, so and 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 just uh, save the title another time for for our club. Um, previously, even all the Dortmund fans in Malaysia, especially, we are all known um, Borussia Dortmund as a club that always come up with the very talented young players, and and even they produce a very good product. But then we're talking about Daniel Malen, uh, who signed to play basically to replace Jadon Sancho. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, I think that he struggled a little bit in the beginning, but uh, he has now scored three in his last three games. Um, how would you rate his performance so far? I think Daniel uh, is doing really, really, really fine. He's getting better every every week, in my opinion, and he's been working hard from, from the very beginning. You have to see that he's still a young player. He uh, comes from a different league. It's not... not the Bundesliga is, it's, uh, the, the Dutch league is, is not bad, but it's still not the Bundesliga. And uh, um, so you have to adapt to that. You have to adapt to your new surroundings. Uh, he moved here with his young family as a young kid. Uh, the language is obviously something is not just too easy for him. So there's a lot of things probably on his mind, but he's been working from day one and he showed his talent from day one. And uh, now he's, he's um, getting rewarded for, for that hard work and for the trust that he uh, or he gets the trust from the coach due to this hard work that he puts on the pitch and uh, I think he's he's just a great addition for us and um, maybe it, it was a little bit unfair to 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 let him fill those big shoes because many really uh, um, expected him to to uh, be the next Jaden Sancho or to be uh, be there when Erling Haaland is is gone and that's um, that's not not as easy as it might seem uh but um, just now I mentioned to you, he's, he's basically to replace um, Jaden Sancho since he, uh, Sancho is going to Manchester United. But then, um, how different is Malen compared to Sancho in your point of view? I mean, they're totally different players. Jaden Sancho is somebody who, who likes to play the wing and he likes uh, to, to play in small spaces because he likes to dribble players. And um, Donny Malin is some, somebody else. He's really good in knowing where to be at the right time. So his positioning is, is quite well. He uses his speed pretty good and he, he can get up to speed, that's for sure. And he has a, a very good shot and that's what he has proven the, la the last couple of games at least. Um, so they are not the, type, the same type of players. And it, it, as I mentioned before, it, it would be unfair to really compare them because um, that's... that's um, it, that's not the player we brought on to fill uh, to fill the role of Jaden Sancho. It's a player who brings a different kind of quality, and we we want him in this club to to bring us joy by doing the best things he can do. And that's not uh, pretending or uh, or playing like Jaden Sancho. That's something something totally different on the pitch. And I think it suits quite well. And uh, I mentioned it; he's getting better. Um, but. 
I personally think about the maybe the major threat for Dortmund this season is about their defensive stats. Um, only one clean sheet in the Bundesliga this season. Uh, do you think it's good enough to challenge for a league title, or maybe in the upcoming January transfer window they should buy someone? We had a lot of injury trouble, and uh, the defensive yeah. department also also was involved in that. Um, and um, so, I think it's a good thing, first of all, that a lot of players are coming back now and getting back to full strength. We just got back our our uh, guys like Erling Haaland, who is a key player. Uh, Jude Bellingham was out with a little injury. Moda Hood was really uh, out for a long time in midfield, and he was in fantastic form before that. So Axel Witzel, who came out of a long injury, had to play uh, an awful lot. And um, so defense is not just our last four players or last five players in that case, plus the goalkeeper, the defense really starts at the, at the very top of our, our team. And that's, uh, that's our, our offense. So everybody has to work on that. And it didn't really click in every game. That's, that's for sure. On the other hand, Marco Rosa had to switch up the defense almost every game because there was somebody injured. There was somebody maybe with a red card. There was something going on. So they, they couldn't get in, into the groove if that makes sense, you know, to really yeah. get to know each other perfectly. And that's really important to be a, a, a solid, solid defense. But I think the quality is still there and the guys, they want to defend better and they're working on that. And I hope with, with the players staying healthy and staying in, uh, uh, injured free, uh, they might have a chance to really, really improve that by just getting some time together on the pitch and getting to know each other and, and how to make the, the best of, of each other. And that's really important, especially in defense. But as I mentioned, defense is a, is a, is a thing that the full team has to fulfill. And um, yeah, we, we, had, we had our problems because there was a lot of uh, fluctuity, so a lot of mixing up the team. So that, that does make, the, make it easy. Uh, I like it when you mention about the injury problem. Since uh, early season, we can see that uh, even as a whistle playing as a centre back, right? <laughs> um, yeah. But um, Togan Hazard uh, is someone that's incredibly versatile. We know that uh, he will do whatever the coach asks for him. But your point of view, which is the best position for him? Uh, because since this season, he played for left wing back, left wing, and then and even number time for some some games, or maybe your, your own view? I, I mean, I like to see him on the pitch because he's just a great guy and he's, uh, he's really versatile. You're absolutely right. Sometimes that's not a good thing as a player. I myself could play a couple of, of, of positions and sometimes that leads to you not really finding your, your place. But I think that's not the case with Torgan. Torgan uh, gives this extra bit of, of possibility for the coach to put him, as you mentioned, on the left wing, on the right wing maybe, on the left back, on, in the four, four defense or five defense. I, I think he could play whatever you, you really ask of him. He's might, he might be a little short to play center, center back. That, that might be a hard thing for him, but who knows? And, and who knows if he might pick up some, some gloves one day and, and go into the box for 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 COVID. but um, he's he's a real intelligent player. Who, when it comes to to um, to initiating pressing situations, defensive situations, he's very very good at that. Uh, reading what the 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 opposite the opponent has uh, or will offer you, and um, so having him in the team is is always a good thing. He might not be the fastest. He might he might not be the the tallest, as I mentioned, but he's very skillful he's very intelligent with and without the ball and that gives him uh, uh compared or com combined with this um um with the possibility of playing multiple positions makes him very very important for the team and his experience as well so um i i like what he is doing i like what i've seen so far he himself had a little bit of injury trouble but um i think if he's in full fitness he's always up for for the first 11 in my opinion um this session couldn't be perfect if you are not mentioning about Erling Haaland, right? <laughs> so, but um, I think he's back at a perfect time since he just need around less than 10 minutes last week to get a goal after mm -hmm. several um, weeks out of injury. But then with Champions League, is it, do you see this being Haaland's last season with the club? I don't know. At the moment, 
me myself and I think everybody who likes Borussia Dortmund is really enjoying what we're seeing from Erling Haaland. As you mentioned, he comes back out of an injury uh, situation and scores right away. So um, he's really, really that important for the team because obviously he's a real key figure whenever he's on the pitch. Yeah. And uh, the, the team knows that he will help whenever you put the ball in, onto his feet. Um, and he was missing, but... Um, if it's this last season, I don't know. Listen, our, our CEO, Hans-Joachim Watzke, said he's, he's not sure that is Hurling's last season at BVB. So it might give you a hint. So, of course, the club will try uh, everything they can to, to keep him. He has a long-term contract still. And, of course, it's a big package when, when teams will get interested. It's not, it's not easy for many teams to, to even come up with the right numbers. So I have hopes, but until then, and until we know, and until it's decided, I'll just enjoy this, this freak of nature on the pitch, helping out uh, in, in, in this most spectacular way. Just, just that last goal against Wolfsburg was, was again, a spectacular one. So I, I really love this guy. He's, uh, he, he's fantastic to watch in practice every day. And of course, on the pitch, and uh, I hope he will stay with us for long, but, but who knows? I mean, the recent past has shown, and he's an intelligent guy, the recent past has shown that um, sometimes making the next step too soon is not always a good thing. And uh, it's not really working out for everybody. So why not develop even further? Because he has had a development in his time with Borussia Dortmund, and there's still something he can improve on. And um, then there are guys like Jude Bellingham who are, giving signs that they really want to build something here because they really think that, that this club can be the right fit for them and to, to make a, a, the next step together. So that can be interesting for a guy like Erling Haaland as well to know these important guys like Jude Bellingham and maybe some others will stay on a little longer as well. So who knows? We'll see. But I hope he will stay for, for a couple uh, more seasons. But Patrick, let's see he's going out. Um, which club do you think are the favorites or maybe suitable for him? Maybe one club you can name it. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm I'm not speculating here, and and you have to think. Like I said, there's a big package, so there there must be a lot of money and a lot of uh, money for Erling and of course for Borussia Dortmund. That's a huge package. So how many clubs do you know could lift that? And with financial fair play, and if the FIFA really goes for that financial fair play, um, I think there's not a lot of clubs really can do that. So. It's really thin up there uh, with the with the opportunity, the, the clubs that are that are maybe able to to have a say in it, and so I, I don't know, but I won't speculate. I won't give you a name because uh, uh, <laughs> I hope there is none. I hope there is none. Okay, I take it that those those clubs with the big money, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, but I said, but I said, even those clubs have to be careful with what they are spending. You know, and uh, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe with a little bit of help from the FIFA and financial fair play, we are able to secure Erling Haaland a little longer. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about the De Classica this weekend. Um, yeah, Borussia Dortmund have lost their last six meetings with Bayern Munich, but with the return yeah. of Haaland and maybe impressive form from Danny Malen, do you think yeah. they can finally end that run this weekend? Of course, I hope. And I, I, I don't just hope that for this game. I hope that the, the whole championship race will stay uh, exciting and, and, and tense and close until the very end, at least. And uh, of course, I hope that my team will win this game after, after those defeats recently. And they really hurt. Um, but you mentioned it. Earl is back at the right time. He's in good shape. Um, so is Modahut. I mean, he, yeah. he's important in midfield. He gives the team some some different ideas. So that that's good. Um, Donia Marlin is coming to form. That can be can be a good point in time to to have those guys back where they belong. Um, and of course, every fan. And I know the situation is difficult again in in Germany and in the Bundesliga. And there might not be a full stadium, but every fan that will be in, that will be in the stadium will be at least twice as loud as usual to, to help being the 12th man on the pitch to help our team to, to get, in, get in an extra motivation, an extra power down there on the pitch to finally win this one again. And it, if, if it's not happening, it's still not the end of the season. There's still so many games to, to, uh, to be played where 
really close in the Bundesliga, just one point behind Bayern. So it, everything is not decided after this one, no matter which way it goes. So um, I just hope it's, it's going to be a, a fantastic day tomorrow for my team and my colors, obviously. But um, if it's happened not to be, then I hope it's going to stay a, a close race until the very end. And I think Borussia Dortmund has proven in the Bundesliga that they're this, this time again, this season again, capable of really uh, uh, be there when it comes to, to uh, who wants the title in the end. And I, I hope it's going to stay exciting. Uh, and in the end, it's going to be the right team uh, getting the trophy. <laughs> uh, Patrick, if you mm. take out, um, just put Lewandowski out of the picture, um, mm. who's, who is the most important player for Bayern? Is there such thing? I don't know. I mean, is there that one player that really stands out? You took Lewandowski already away. Mm. Um, they have a fantastic squad and they have the depth of the squad. They have players like Kimmich, Goretzka. And if they don't play, then they have Musiala and Tuliso. And uh, then they have Müller. And <laughs> so they have so many big names. Look at the wings. There's Sané and Gnabry and there's Coman. And so the depth of the squad, I think it's it's about 100 million per season that they can spend more into the squad uh, than, it, for example, our team. And that gives you some quality, you have to say, and that's fairly earned over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, but that's the advantage, to be capable and to be able to have a, the, the right depth of the squad. And even those uh, clubs and even, even Bayern Munich struggled when they had injury and COVID and a lot of players were gone. Suddenly the air gets thin and they struggle a little bit. And that's what this year makes it or kept it maybe interesting while other teams were struggling as, as well. Um, so nobody and not even the Bayern with, with this depth of the squad pulled away um, and Borussia Dortmund kept it close with, with, with all they could do, even with, with our injury uh, situation. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't name a player. And uh, it, it would have been Lewandowski. You took that away. So the depths of the squad, Müller, Komor, Gnabry, Kimmich, Goretzka, Tuliso, pick one. Pick one. They're all world-class players. So, um, but we have some really, really good players and some world-class, I think, world-class play, uh, world players as well in our team. So um, I'm, I'm not afraid of that big one tomorrow. I'm not afraid. Uh, Patrick, before we go into the last part, which is we are going to know your prediction for the Classical this weekend. Uh, if you don't mind, maybe I can ask you uh, one simple question, talking about um, Bayern Munich actions to cut the salary for those players that have to go to quarantine. Um, the, last week got the reports, there are five players. Um, your opinion for those players that didn't take for the vaccine or maybe against the vaccine campaign, uh, your, your point of view? I mean, it's everybody has to decide, uh, decide for, for himself what he thinks of it, what he makes of it. But um, I think we as a, as a country in Germany, uh, um, and it's fair to say that, that all the, the bright minds and all the the uh, uh, medicine uh, and men all the doctors all the all the professors they say it's a good thing and it's the only way we can really uh break this pandemic and and, and slow down the process of of, of the, this situation we're in the, at the moment and um i myself decided to to get back pretty early and um, i point. think it's a good thing and it secures not just my health or helps securing that at least um but does so for others as well. So I think it's a good thing and, and, and we should do it or everybody should do it, but it's not up for me to decide. Um, it's up for, for the leaders of this country to decide and for everybody himself. But um, with, the, with the rules that they put out now, it's, it's clear that uh, you can't do much anymore if you're not amongst those who, who follow the rules. Yeah. And yeah. Um, maybe that will apply for, for football players pretty soon uh, uh, as well. But as I mentioned, that's not for me to really decide or have an opinion on other people. I just have my own and I'm vaccinated. And I think it's a good thing to, to do something against the pandemic, not just for myself, but for everybody else as well. All right, Patrick, your predictions for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, my hopes are we're gonna win. And, and that's, that will be my prediction. It's, uh, it's going to be an exciting and close game and, and versus Dortmund will win in the end. Um, I, don't, I don't know any numbers. I usually don't, don't say any numbers, but that's my prediction. And um, whatever it is, it's going to be a close race. And, and that's my biggest prediction. This year, it's going to be close again to the very end. And the Bundesliga will stay, stay exciting. 
and yes, in the end, we we gonna win. We gonna ah, win the title. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Uh, because personally, I also hope that Dortmund. <laughs> okay. <it. laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Patrick, for this Thank time. You. For time spent with me. me. Thank you so much. So take care. Uh, stay you safe. Too. Okay, you too. Thank you. All the, All the best. And stay safe. Okay, thank you so much. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye.